you can't read, you can't learn for yourself. You can't learn independently. So reading is a key skill. The core purpose of the Reading Factory is to bring children up to speed. Two factors coincided. One, the cessation of reading recovery funding in the budget, and two, the availability of a very, very good teacher whom I'd heard about, who had vast experience with preps and was looking to change schools. So I offered her a job here at this school, knowing that she would be a, uh, an asset in terms of early childhood development. I came to the school as a leading teacher in 2002 and led the Prep 2-2 to two team. At the end of 2004 he came to me and said he'd like to take me out full time and he said... Liz, I want you to have a look around this school and identify something that will make a difference. And you told me about it and then we'll fund it and make it happen and what Liz came up with was the concept of literacy intervention. I started to take out the bottom two or three children out of every grade prep to two and work with them. And I was the only member of the team, there was no one else. The Reading Factory is a basis for the literacy improvement across the school, which has been growing since the inception of the Reading Factory. I started off in a shelter shed, a converted shelter shed, which will get extremely hot in summer and cold in winter and we'd regularly fry cockroaches in the printer. So then when, I, when that was being demolished we moved into another old building but it was better. We, we felt we'd got to step up uh, but it was in three rooms, three small rooms interconnected with one outside door and it was very difficult to get them in and out so that was a real problem. We didn't have the space so I couldn't keep um, my eye on what was going on, so things had happened in one room and I wasn't sure about and no one would tell me about it till the child had left, so that was a bit hard. Then we moved into our lovely room where we are now and that's been terrific and I realised just how nice an environment can make a whole experience feel. Everyone feels part of everyone, we can all have, have a joke, have a laugh, help the children. What's her name? Tess. 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 Good job. Well done. Last one. See if we can read this beautifully. So we identified the students to enter the Reading Factory program by looking at the data and we'll look at children that are in a need of boosting their reading results and comprehension strategies. There's spelling testing, there's uh, what we call a pat reading test, uh, reading records and individual listening to students and, and, and the way they, they talk um, and also their backgrounds. When I test the children at the beginning of the year and I do all the online testing for the prep children, they don't even get to the beginning place. They have, some of them haven't been to kindergarten, some of them haven't been read to, some of them, their parents don't speak English, some have never held a pencil. A lot of the time, especially when we start with preps, um, they don't have the language, they don't understand what letters are and that they have sounds. So we start at that point with the early years. The reading program is a program that's targeted at individual students uh, at their particular needs. So they come to us and it's sort of like giving them a bit of a boost. And I will have those, my slippers. Well done. When the Reading Factory started, the percentage of students with non-English speaking backgrounds probably would have been around about 60%, 65. Um, in 2018, it's 90%. The backgrounds of the students, they're all mostly low socioeconomic and over 90%, especially my class this year, over near only one student has an English speaking background. A lot of these students have come from difficult backgrounds. Um, they have faced challenges such as war-torn countries, um, families been, being separated. Since I've been here, I think every major conflict in the world has ended up with some people coming to our doorstep. So we've had people from Bosnia and Serbia in conflict, from the Afghanistan, um, from Sudan, and so all these children have come to our doorstep. We've got lots of them. 
Some of the children had experienced trauma, well, leaving their homelands trauma enough, but have seen people die in front of them or have spent time in camps or on boats and they brought certain difficulties with them. So they're already displaced socially and, and emotionally and they come to school and a lot of the time these kids can't speak the language um, that's dominant in this country so that's a challenge for them and we have to make them feel comfortable and safe and um, supported, accepted before that they can actually go, oh, there's something here to learn. From whatever level they started at in this year, we're aiming to move them forward one year in one year because otherwise, clearly uh, and self-evidently, they're losing traction and dropping back in relation to the average peers. So we're trying to make up the, the vast difference and get them up to speed. The main purpose is to put the children back into classroom programs as soon as we can. And his cousins at the waterfall. Lots of other young boys. The students basically go every single day for between 40, 45 minutes to an hour and they are able to practice their reading skills, their comprehension skills. So I've been working in the reading factory for about four years. My role there is an assistant helping along with everybody else with the literacy programs that are run. We have different programs for different year levels um, and sometimes it's pretty straightforward. They're all set out for the kids that are managing, that know the routine, that program runs smoothly. Other times we have students that need a lot more support or structure to their programs and often it's my responsibility to find the work that they're going to do and to realise what levels they're at in their reading or spelling and then um, progress from there, build on from there. So on a daily basis we teach them how to spell the word correctly, how to read the book with the correct pronunciation. So word by word, one to one, we help them. Say it out loud. Space. 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 We started with the spelling test. 10 to 15 uh, Oxford words. Some words, sometimes we put two words uh, from one to 20. Uh, numbers for grade one, or we put the uh, name of months towards about 15 words that they need to write. We are testing them. By any mistake, they need to write in scrapbook uh, three times the same words and repeat for tomorrow. We are helping, um, you know, like a refugee uh, kids. They are very weak in English. We need to give them how to read books, and we need also them how to write sentence. You see, so that to improve them. So we're helping the children who are coming from non-English speaking background, we're helping them to, to pull them into the speaking, into the writing, reading, because most of them when they first come, they actually just know how to say the name. And then somehow I sympathize with them because it was me one day when I came here, same thing, I just know how to say my name. Sitting with a table of three or four children and working through a process with them whereby we go, we do their spelling, they have homework that they take home and do spelling, we do the spelling with them and we do um, a worksheet of some sort for different year levels, so it might be a comprehension with the twos and threes and it might be um, learning a sound with the ones. The early years it's a lot more focused, um, there's a lot of intense focus on phonics and um, their sight vocabulary and letter recognition. With the older students they learn it in class so they understand the language features but they're not sure how to use it. And I think that's where the structure comes in, where we show them different examples of how using language in writing or speaking relates to what you do you know, at home or outside of school and how we can read books in general or how we can speak to other people. And that's what they experience with us. We have 40 minutes to kind of get through that process with them and then we change to a new batch. <laughs> Over the course of a week, well, there'd be 180 students would pass through, but they would pass through five times. Well, I never called it the, re the Reading Factory. That was coined by Kevin because he could see they were coming in and going out, coming in going out. And uh, he started calling it the Factory, and I actually quite like it. So we, we're now officially the Reading Factory.
recommendation homework. Good job. The need for reading has to come first before everything else. Literacy development's the number one priority at this school. Now the teachers in the classroom understand that and they can use it to their advantage because as the students go out to the reading factory it leaves a smaller group back in the classroom. Having them go into a reading program means I can work with my higher ability who you know, we, we know that are just aching to work with the classroom teacher and often get put aside because they know what they're doing. So it's amazing that in the classroom, if those children are being looked at at the reading factory, I can work with my middle children that might be, you know, desperate need of getting, they have, they have smaller gaps, and my higher children that just want to work with their teacher. And it just enables, it frees me up to work with those children who deserve the same time. I would not be able to teach reading or literacy without it, I, I think, because I've got 60% of my class were significantly behind the expected levels at the start of this year. If I'm supposed to cater for the, the students at, at ability or above, and I've got 14 of my 23 way behind, they can't cope with what we're teaching at the moment. It gives me a chance to differentiate my curriculum for the at ability students while they get the help they need it. So they've got the, the ability to have that small group and to actually move those forward at a faster rate in their classroom while the Reading Factory kids are being moved forward at a faster rate in that specialised environment. It helps the, t the teachers in the classroom because they, they're students that have um, more needs come to us for a while and they can, work, they can focus more on the, on the kids that they've got left in the classroom. So. It works for the kids coming to us, it works for the teachers. Without reading, they're isolated. And without reading, they're not going to um, be the best that they can be. And you know, you want everyone to reach their full potential. Our children benefit so much from the one-on-one, -on -one. otherwise they could get lost in the classroom. Reading is so important. If they're not able to read, what are they going to do? So it is such a huge benefit. It builds their reading up, their confidence. They're happy that they've actually learnt it. I can read that book on my own now. I don't need your help, Miss Kerry, anymore. I know how to sound it out. They might not be too strong um, in, in spelling or reading, and that's something that they might feel quite uh, insecure about. And you see, throughout their time with us, they start to grow. They start to understand what they're doing and how to do it, and they feel a lot more confident about how to learn. And they take that experience with them back into the classroom. The difference I can see with the children when they enter the Reading Factory program is a lot of confidence. You can find sometimes um, when they first enter the classroom in grade three, they might be nervous about reading aloud, they might be nervous about sharing answers in the classroom, but because they're withdrawn and they're in a small group, they're able to come back into the classroom and just gain some of that confidence and feel like they can raise their hand and they can comment on the the uh, strategy that we might be learning at the time. So it's nice to see that confidence obviously might be lower in term one and just build with each term. Sarah saw a car following the truck. I think it would have a really large negative impact on these students and their education if there was no reading room. I don't think that they would get a lot of one-on-one -on -one support and attention to their education that they sorely need. I think that it's a chance for them to be around other students who are like them and to, to know that they're not the only ones who struggle in this area. And so without any of that, I think that their literacy skills and education might be lacking in some way and also their sense of development of identity and belonging in the school might even be lacking as well because they don't have that extra support program. The equity funding that we get that allows us to run that Reading Factory program is absolutely crucial. In fact, there was a point in time where we thought the equity funding was going to be reduced substantially and we were looking at, um, at what we would do to still maintain that uh, Reading Factory program because we know it's so important. Eight out of ten uh, high impact uh, teaching strategies are clearly evident in the Reading Factory and how it's taught. I think this has been a program that's really supported teachers, well it's been designed to support teachers who feel that they need help with children, particularly children in their classroom. And what it does is move them on at a fairly quick pace. There will be children that will spend longer because they have learning issues or because they 
their English level isn't quite up to scratch at the beginning. But most of them, we're trying to move them back into their classroom at, with the skills to be able to cope with classroom life. When they have reached a certain standard and we're able to see that their literacy, speaking, writing skills um, are at a good stage and that they can use them independently, um, well, that child exits the program. They are then tested. We go through multiple tests to see where their standards are at and if there's nothing else in the program that can help them, that they've exceeded all the standards and all the levels, they're exited and then they can rejoin their class and not have any more um, intervention in that area. I've got running records which I take regularly. I probably do about 500 a term. So I do regular running records and that means that that shows their progress, shows their comprehension skills. And the other thing is you just know. You just know <laughs> when they're ready to go back. And I liaise with the classroom teachers to make sure that they're happy. And then I check on them to see that they've, they've made the transition into the classroom. But Usually it's when they pass benchmark and they're independent and confident. Dawn. Right, you ready? Birch. Palm. The palm tree was very big. In 2013, the Grattan Institute contracted the Weekend Australian newspaper to do a, a project on the, an analysis of the NAPLAN results. There were roughly a thousand schools that were classified as disadvantaged across Australia. And of those 1,000 schools, 46 were found to be performing at or above their state averages. And of those 46, Dandenong North Primary School was number one in that year. Now, number one because of the huge contribution of the reading factory, and number one because the rest of the staff built on the success that the reading factory um, was able to contribute to. The student outcomes this year have been exceptional. At the start of the year I had over 60% of my students, the testing indicated significantly behind. I've now only got uh, uh, 10 to 15, which is three students. One of them is special needs, another one is transition, and the other one is, I believe, special needs as well. It's helped all of the rest of the class to catch up and it's made a massive difference. I've taught in London for six years and also at another school in Melbourne and it, it's really difficult as a classroom teacher to be able to sit with those children who might be slightly underperforming. What is amazing about our program at Dandenong North, the Reading Factory, is that the consistency, it happens every single day. So those children are looked after every single day. At other schools it might be one or two days a week if you're lucky to be honest and to have something that's so consistent for those children and those children get to be in such a routine it's like magic to a classroom teacher because it makes us relax a little bit to know that those children are being are being looked after. Success stories every day. I see success sit in front of me every day. Five lots of success. Because something they didn't know yesterday, they know today. My biggest success stories in the reading room is actually when the children graduate from reading room. So it means that they've worked so hard in reading room from might be prep up to grade two and they get to grade three and maybe in term four, term three, they get to graduate and then they come back into the classroom and they've got the skills and they've got the knowledge and they can read beautifully. And I can think of two children in particular this year who graduated uh, term two and it's lovely to see those children flourish and be involved in the mainstream classroom activities. We had a little boy that came into grade two at level six, so he's gone up 13 levels so far this year. And he's really making great gains. And that's not just with us, because it's a classroom program we're supporting as a classroom teacher as well. Our most recent NAPLAN results really brought together the success that the Reading Factory and the grade three teachers work towards. In the 2017 NAPLAN results, uh, I mean, they were good results, but we knew our focus was for reading. So it was lovely to see that the work for the Reading Factory combined with the Grade 3 teachers, the Grade 2 teachers, the Grade 1 teachers, really, um, from previous years. We knew our focus was reading, and it was great to see in the 2018 results that the bottom children were closer 
to the average uh, for the state, so it's fantastic. I'm pretty sure that if we didn't have the Reading Factory program going, the school would be very different. We wouldn't have the high performance that we have achieved over that sustained period of time, which is now about 16 years. And the reason we wouldn't have it is that uh, the children wouldn't be able to read at the level that they could a, independently learn for themselves in the years four and upwards uh, year levels, and B, the teachers would have to spend a lot more time focusing on literacy in the classrooms, and that would take time away from other curriculum areas. So it would be a very, very different school without that program. In fact, I wouldn't like to be part of it, to be honest, without that program. to the reading room it, you just feel joy because like you're learning. In the reading factory you read, you find out the meanings of new words, the definition and they give you a list of words that you have to go and practice. The beginning of reading room I didn't know anything what they were saying. If I didn't go to the reading room I wouldn't learn much English. I would still speak in my language and nobody will understand me. So spelling has really helped me because I'm not the best at spelling and it's also made my vocabulary dynamic so I know a bit more in English and known how to pronounce words and spell. Without spelling you won't be able to write English and nobody will really understand. And reading, it's reading, you need to learn how to be fluent, you need to have good punctuation and I'm really good at reading now and I really like it. The benefits for being in the Reading Factory is your reading, your spelling, your vocabulary. You have lots of benefits. You're learning how to pronounce things and you're learning how to read things. If you're in class and you don't know how to read, and if the reading room wasn't here in our school, then I probably wouldn't know. I would just sit down there. I would be scared to ask the teacher how to read something. So that really helped me a lot. When I move back to my classroom, I feel more confident because like you've, you've known, you've just learnt a new thing. So I really thank Miss Thomas and the teachers in the Reading Factory because they really understood at what level I was during my reading and my spelling and my, vocab and my vocabulary. They really understood where I was and where I was meant to be and they helped me a lot. And when I finished the Reading Factory, it was really great for me because I got to be with my teacher more often, I got to be with the class more often, I could learn what the class was doing and I went a step ahead and it was successful. I was proud of myself and my parents could be proud of me too. I feel very lucky because not lots of schools have this program and I feel bad for the students that need the program because they suffer throughout the class because maybe sometimes they're not sure how to read or spell or say a word. If any school wants to get a reading reading room or reading factory, I really recommend it. I feel really lucky to be in this school. The reading room factory and the whole school is really good for me. They will always say, stand up for yourself and never give up. And then that's when, uh, that's when I know that I want to stay in this school more and more. I feel really lucky to be in Danong North Primary School because in Afghanistan there's lots of wars going on. And if I was there in Afghanistan, I wouldn't probably go to school because of the dangers in those schools every day. So if my parents hadn't have come here today in Australia, then I wouldn't have been here at all. But I'm really lucky and thankful that I'm here today and I'm learning English and it's really beneficial for me so one day I can be really successful throughout my life. Dandenong North Primary School has been recognised as a high performing school over a sustained period of time and as a result of that we've received interest from interstate and from other schools within Victoria. So we've had quite a number of visits, people come to our school through the partnership with Social Ventures Australia too. And of those schools, almost invariably the thing that takes their attention is the Reading Factory. That's number one. Many schools have come through and had a look at the, well, a look at the school as well as the program. A lot of them were principal groups from New South Wales and a lot were from Victoria. 
and quite a number of schools have actually picked up the concept and taken it back to their settings and introduced it. Two schools in particular I know have looked at the program and taken ideas away with a runs the same way and adapted it probably, but one was Auburn North in New South Wales and the other was the Basin in Victoria. The Basin Primary School has uh, adopted a similar sort of a model and visited our school quite a few times with a lot of their staff. Principal Graham Russell and I went to Dandenong North with another reading recovery, retired reading recovery teacher, because we were running reading recovery and only about five or six kids were getting access to that per year in grade one only. And Graham knew about Dandenong North's reading factory and noticed that it was catering for a large number of kids, and that's what we wanted to do across all year levels if we could. So we went along and loved the room, loved the energy. And so we uh, also noticed how busy it was and how the um, kids would come and go constantly. And we liked that aspect as well. And so we wondered how we could implement it here. We started with just me in a grade one level, working with nine children, three at a time, just by myself. And the results of that were really good, catering for those kids who need extra help in reading. They're no EAL students at all, so we had to have a slightly different approach to Daniel North. The visit came about really early in my tenure at Dufton College, and I turned to Kevin and Jenny um, and the team here about what was needed to transform Dufton. And the first area we identified was reading was a real issue. And we're not talking about reading in the general sense, we're talking about students who are five years behind and we had to find a point of intervention for those students. He said to me, you have to do two things. Firstly, you have to have a safe and orderly learning environment, and secondly, you have to make sure that every student can access what you're doing. And if there's a point of need of intervention, that's where you have to start. And he showed me the reading factory, and that was the point of intervention that we saw. And so we took from that the, the principles that he'd put in place here. So we now have a similar model, we call it our intervention area and we run it across both reading as well as our maths intervention as well as our what we'd call our secondary intervention and it's all about getting students ready for the learning that they need within a normal classroom environment. So now we run it right across the school from prep to grade six and every year level's approach is different and we have data that shows that having that close three-on-one contact with a teacher and being instructed explicitly in reading has changed their reading levels when they go back into the classroom and can read independently. It's definitely improved their reading across the board. Our reading NAPLAN results are above state average now. They've um, definitely increased, increased since we've been running the reading lab. There's a young fella, Cam. Uh, Cam at year seven, um, 18 months ago. Um, firstly, getting Cam to school was an issue. It took him less than three months to move from a level, what we'd call a level T, right through to level Z. He just flew. Um, in his NAP plan, in his NAP plan just recently at year nine, he was just below state average in the majority of things. Now, he wasn't even near state average a couple of years ago. And so for him, the confidence of getting through the program, the confidence of working with one intervention person who just kept at him and kept at him made all the difference. He'll go on and finish year 12. Now this is a kid who would have dropped out at the end of year nine, year 10, stayed at home. And we've got a number of young ones like that now. We've had visits from other schools. Tacoma Primary School have come and had a look at our approach and are now using their form of reading factory. For other schools that don't have a program like this, I would say this sort of a program can be run by class teachers. If you're in a school that doesn't have equity money and you've got your basic uh, student resource package, the approaches can be adopted in the classroom. In fact, they're basic uh, literacy development approaches, but you need to focus the time. If there is additional money made available, and most schools had uh, reading recovery at one stage, I would replace reading recovery with this sort of program, which is 
covers more students, creates a sense of urgency amongst the students to move forward and values that growth mindset and shows progress um, as you move forward, quickly as you move forward. I know this works, but I also know this works with one person. So you can actually impact 24 children. You can impact with one staff member and an ESS support person, you could impact 36, because I know because we did it. So start off small um, and go with it. We have a lot of kids when we started and some of them now I think in, 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 in uni. So well, some of them even came and, and, and found me still here and said, Lino, are you still here? I said, yes, I'm still here. So I've been teaching 45 years and I'm still happy to get up in the morning. I can't think of anything I'd want to do more than teach. Um, I go into that room of a morning and I'm happy to be there. I'm happy, I'm not saying I don't like the holidays or, or the weekends, but I'm happy to be there. I'm happy to make a, a difference in children's lives. Most proud is that I'm able to work in multicultural school. From 120 employees, you will be able to find teachers, people who are working here. They, are, they believe they're Buddhist, Christian, Hindus, Muslim, Jewish. We are able to, to work together in this little room. Multicultural society. This school is the best example the joys that I find in relation to our school is that there are many of the past students who come back to our school to work uh, as teachers or support staff. We have about seven, I think. And the culture of the school is actually uh, enhanced by having past students back working with us because they knew the culture then and they promote the culture now. I'm just really grateful to be a part of this school. I'm grateful to have grown up in this school, you know, with. A lot of these teachers were my teachers, so they're like parents to me, they're like guides, especially you know, in the beginning of my career as well, so I'm just really grateful. I recognise the amazing opportunities that I've had at this school. So I'm most proud of the fact that I took what my school had given me as a child, the opportunities and the love for learning, um, and I carried that with me, and I feel like that's what's made me successful in other areas, in further education and, you know, career-wise as well. And I feel that that's a really important aspect of what we do as primary teachers. So I'm also really proud to be a part of this community as a teacher, and especially in this school, where we can give that back to students. We can give them external experiences to their home lives and, and expose them to a bigger world and essentially inspire that love for learning and that love for continuing learning in the future as well.